Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, <clears throat> so this um, reflection this morning will be on the uh, gospel for the 33rd Sunday of the, the year. Um, and it's uh, based on Mark 13, verses 24 to 32. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then too, he will send the angels to gather his chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. On, on this Sunday, the, the last Sunday but one of, of the church year, the gospel is about the end of the world and the second coming of Christ. From time to time, um, someone gives a day and date for the second coming of Christ. We read it in the newspapers. And in support of their so-called prophecy, they quote the Bible. They obviously have missed the words of Jesus in today's gospel. Uh, but as for that day or hour, nobody knows it. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, no one but the Father. Had it been necessary for us to know the day and the hour of his return in glory, he would have revealed it. The Lord doesn't want us to waste our time working out the, the day and date uh, of his second coming. Um, but he certainly doesn't want us to underestimate the importance of the event. There is always the danger that we do not think enough about it, or that we do not think about it in the right way. We may not be giving this mystery sufficient thought. It seems so distant from the reality of our uh, normal uh, everyday life. And yet we profess our faith in this mystery every time we pray the Nicene Creed at Mass. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We profess our faith in this mystery when we pray the Apostles' Creed. From there, that is, from the right hand of God the Father Almighty, he will come to judge the living and the dead. The first Christians uh, awaited with the greatest zeal the return of Christ in glory. They looked forward to and awaited his return in glory with great hope and great joy. Maybe we do not all share their zeal. We think of the last day as one of awe and terror, a day to fear. Jesus coming in all his power and glory to judge us. Let us not forget what we hear in St. Mark's Gospel today. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then too he will send the angels to gather his chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the world to the ends of heaven. Jesus will send his angels to gather his chosen ones and bring them, bring us to him and to the Father. After all, it was for our sake that he was crucified, suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. He will come in glory to complete his work. He will come to gather us to himself. Already in, in this gospel, according to Mark, Jesus has revealed who he is and why he has come. 
Three times he has prophesied that he will suffer and die for our salvation. Each time he also prophesied that he would rise from the dead. Now he proclaims that he will come again uh, with his angels to gather us from the ends of the world to himself. Let us note how Jesus begins to speak about his coming in glory. How Mark tells us about it. In those days, after the time of distress, after the time of distress, the people for whom Mark wrote his gospel knew what this distress was. Many of their church leaders had been arrested and martyred. Each and every one of them was at risk. They needed a word of encouragement and hope. In every century, Christians, Catholics, have been at risk. Every century has had its martyrs. We have martyrs in different parts of the world at the present time. Many Christians live in places where they are at risk. Today's gospel has a message of hope and encouragement for all who are called to suffer for their faith in any way. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Again, we unavoidably had to miss uh, last last uh, Saturday's notices. But I just want to say one thing really this week, and that is that um, we've had two sessions on this synodal process, the way of the synod, of walking together, listening to one another, listening out for the voice of the Holy Spirit. And um, there have been two good sessions in different ways. I think in some ways, the second session, we'd learned something from the first. And uh, the, the, the result was a, a, a better meeting. But um, what I'm very interested, and in, our little team uh, from the Parish Pastoral Council that are uh, at this stage helping to move things forward, what we would like to hear from you, very, very much would like to hear from you, is how, how you felt about those either of those two meetings. Some of you met, went to both of them. And just to feed back to us, what's, what value do you see it in, in what we've done? How can we um, in, increase that value? Um, in the in the weeks and months ahead speaking personally and very st strongly i think i have a, a great hope that that this process of uh, sharing and listening around the word of god uh, is has a lot of promise for the future and will help us to, to I think to to get into a new way of being the parish a, a new way in which everyone's importance is is uh, more and more clearly experienced I hope that's what I'm, I hope for and uh, I think that's what the Pope is calling us to 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 really um, discover at a deeper level what it means to be the church, to be the people of Jesus Christ for ourselves and for the community. And uh, I think that's an exciting pr prospect, everyone, and a hopeful one. So please let us know what you, how you, feel now about those two meetings um, there'll be the, the email address of Julian and of Terry 
who are our delegates uh, will be in the newsletter. And um, let's know, and then we'll, we'll move on. But we want to move on together. That's the whole thing, walking together. So I urge you to respond to that if you feel you can. Thank you. Have a good week ahead. Not long to uh, Advent. Next Sunday, by the way, just to flag this up, next Sunday marks the 300th anniversary of the foundation of the Congregation of the Passion, of, of the Passionists. And so there will be a special emphasis on St. Paul of the Cross at all of the Masses next weekend. Uh, we'll, we'll use the liturgy of the Sunday, but we will be reflecting on his enormous contribution to the life of the Church and uh, something of how it, it's working out in, uh, in, in uh, this country at the present time. Good. Bye for now. See you when we see you.